Welcome to the next edition of Around the Storage Block video blog. I'm your host, HP Storage Guy, Calvin Zito. Hey, on the video blog today, I want to bring you a demo that I've got of EVA to 3PAR online import. This is really important stuff. Customers who've been uh, historically EVA customers, I think you're really going to like what you see in this new 3PAR box. It has the DNA of an EVA. And what we'll talk about here now is the 3PAR online import tool. What this does is it allows you to easily migrate data from an EVA to a 3PAR. So you can migrate virtual disks, host configurations, all to a 3PAR destination storage system without changing host configurations or interrupting data access. The EVA to 3PAR online import coordinates the movement of data from the source while servicing I.O. requests from the host. And during the migration, host I.O. is serviced from the destination 3PAR storage system. So it's a pretty seamless, easy to use software. So here you can see I've logged into command view on the EVA and I'm looking at, you can see on the left hand side I have one EVA that's part of my configuration. And when I click on that we'll expand the view. And What I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to have to tell the command view software what my source EVA is and what my destination 3PAR is and we'll do that here in a second. I've clicked on the EVA to 3PAR online import tool and this is a a tool that comes standard now with um, Command View EVA. Um, you'll have a, uh, a six month license to use this for free to do this, um, this online migration. So again, as I said, the first thing I need to do is I need to select my source for the online migration. You can see here's the screen where I do that. You can see I'm going to click Add Source. There you can see my one EVA that's part of this uh, management group. So we're going to add this EVA to the online migration import tool. So now we add source. And now I need to add my 3PAR device. In order to add my 3PAR device I have to do that by adding the IP address. On the bottom here my destination. I click on add destination and in order to add my 3PAR device uh, to this online transfer I have to put in the IP address. Username and password. There's some default uh, secure data port and event ports. Those are default ports. If you've changed that in the configuration of your 3PAR device, then you'll need to change that as well on this screen. But those are typically left alone in our default. So it's out there finding it. It has found the 3PAR. You can see it's got, got the name of it. I have a serial number. You can see the Inform OS version. And you can see I've got some other information here. Now you can see under the operational state I have a attention. It's not anything critical. Uh, if it was critical it would be red and it would not let me proceed with this. It's just a, a, a minor probably setting that needed to be addressed but uh, not critical to do for us to continue with the uh, online migration. So now we go back to the root view of the EVA and I again will expand on that. Now you can see I have uh, ever, all of the elements of my or objects that are part of my EVA environment. You can see I have virtual disks, hosts, disk groups, data replication, and hardware. Now when I do an online import, I have a couple of choices actually of what I want to do. I can either migrate virtual disks or I could migrate hosts. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. I'm only going to demo one flavor of it here as we go through this, but there are different types of imports that you can do and the process for each of those is a slightly different, but uh, we'll just focus on migrating some virtual disks. So I'm going to click on and expand virtual disks. There's all my virtual disks and I'm going to pick one here that it happens to be a, a Solaris host based virtual disk and so I'm going to pick that as what I'm going to migrate. Now I get this screen that gives me kind of the overall status of the online imports of what's happening. So since nothing started you can't see a whole lot here. You can see I've got a little green check mark up in the top left that says it's available and that means we're good to start moving forward here. There's three bits of information on this screen that we can see first that we have the EVA that's available to migrate, we can see a migration history, and we can see a migration in process. But let's go ahead and click on add migration and now I get a migration wizard that I have to explicitly select what I want to migrate. Data migration can be done by selecting a host or a virtual disk, and I alluded to this a second ago. In addition to the host or the virtual disk explicitly selected for migration, there's other objects that might be included in the migration using an implicit selection. And What we mean by that is if you pick a virtual disk that's connected to multiple hosts, 
because we're going to unzone this, you have to move everything. So you either are going to, this is an all or nothing proposition. And that's what the um, implicit uh, migration means, that once you explicitly select what you want to migrate, it's going to implicitly migrate everything else related and connected to that uh, to that either host or virtual disk. You can see I've got uh, a number of pieces of information here where I'm going to confirm what I'm going to explicitly and implicitly migrate as my source. I click Next. So now you see I get to confirm my migration destination. So this is one last chance to make sure I've got it all right. And when I hover over some of these things like peer ports and fiber channel ports, you can see some of the detail. Key thing I want to make sure you realize is that the migration requires a one-to-one -one relationship between an EVA and a 3PAR. So it is a one-to-one -one connected EVA to a 3PAR. You can't do multiples going to multiples. So once I click Next, I see this Configure Destination Volumes. There's a number of things that I get to choose here. I can choose my um, CPGs. Uh, that's the common provisioning group on the 3PAR side that I'm going to use when I migrate my data over to the 3PAR. It will pick something that is as close as it can based on what it is on the EVA, but you may want to change it for the migration. It also, here is where you decide whether your volumes are going to be thin or thick. Uh, you have to have a license to use thin volumes on the three par in order to have thin. You won't see that option if you don't have it, but uh, th that's also something else you can set up. And to use different settings for each volume, you just basically would repeat this for each volume. The summary screen then is shown. You get to review again the information and then you click Add Migration. So now what it has to do is it has to go off and prepare all of this. And you see the clock spinning. It's off uh, actually preparing to set up the migration. It's off creating the virtual volumes with the same name, uh, with the same worldwide name and creating the hosts. And when this is complete, the preparation status changes to done and we'll see a button here that says unzone. And this is really the, the big step here in, in moving forward. It's really when you get to the point of no return. And once you see that button, what you really want to do is go back and make sure that you've set up everything. You probably want to rescan your LUNs and make sure everything is connected the way you think it should be um, connected before you click the next step, which will then begin the migration. So now you can see I've got my unzone button. Again, this is what I'm going to press that actually begins the uh, migration from the EVA to the three par. And I click it, and you can see I then get one more last chance to make a final choice. Do I really want to do this? And I'm going to click Start. I get some information that uh, I won't review here, but now I've started the migration, and now we are now in the midst of uh, the migration. This screen that we're looking at, the status summary screen, it is not giving me a, a completely real-time look of things. It updates uh, somewhere around every 30 seconds or once a minute. So I'm going to stream forward here to where we see it starting to actually uh, do the data transfer. And you can see the volumes uh, are starting to now transfer data. You can see the percentage that it's complete. And when we get done here, you will see that uh, each of those volumes has at least indicated here that they've transferred. Actually, you can see that according to the migrations in progress, it says that it's completed it. Um, we're going to click over here onto the management tab. And you can see that it says who's got a lock on the LUN. You can see it's still locked, and there's something there that says who has it. It's PP, PMM migrate, which means it actually still isn't finished doing everything that it needs to do to release the, uh, the LUN and have it be complete. And as we go back to the EVA to 3PAR online import tab, um, we'll see this pop up here in just a moment to say that the uh, migration is complete. And you'll see the migration history here show that it's complete in just a second. And now you can see I've shown that the migration has completed. What I want to do is then uh, go back and show you on that management tab. You'll now see that there's a new owner of the LUN says it's still locked, but it's PM complete. And now I have a comment here showing the uh, transfer to the three par has now actually successfully completed. And now you can see it listed on the status page as being a completed migration. You can see where the migration has completed. So that's the demo I want to show you. Then hopefully for the EVA customers, this will be very helpful to you as you plan your migration. 
from an EVA to the HP 3 Parts Store Search 7000.